Jaguar ya se this is this is Ghana News TV the time is 6 o'clock let me follow bye bye you know every day there's nothing stopping us now like nothing whatever we see on on that dashboard it's got nothing to do with me it's got it's, it's what you guys are doing do you understand however we make this work is what it will be right if i haven't if being here hasn't made it clear to you already so far your lives can change dramatically uh, people's lives have already changed we don't realize it because it's been hard over the last few three years but when we first started there was only one car in the yeah. in the car park it was mine now there's no space in this car park but i'm not happy with this including me some of the cars that we're seeing there they're not nice yeah. <laughs> yeah. huh yeah. and they're, they're not nice your car it doesn't suit you. Your car doesn't suit you. Mauli, your car doesn't suit you. You understand? Know Benjamin, you keep complaining about petrol. We can be materialistic sometimes. In fact, we can be materialistic a lot of the times. It's just that a lot of people don't like to talk about money. A lot of people don't like to talk about things. Tribute by Sun. It took me weeks to attempt writing this tribute. In fact, this has been one of the most difficult things that I've ever had to do in my life. I began with a word, then I stopped, then I asked myself, ha, ah, so my mother is no more here. Is she really gone? I saw my father's missed calls. I had missed that faithful day. And then when I called back, all he said was, mommy is gone. And I asked, gone where? He responded, we are at UGMC. My drive there was the longest ever. Even though it took me about 10 minutes, it felt like 10 hours. When I finally arrived at the hospital, I saw her lying down and I smiled. She looked so beautiful and at peace in that moment. I knew she was in a better place. Every time you saw me, you would say, Hey, Kofi. Hi, Tun Tun Papa. Kofi, you've become dark. Hey Kofi, hi Kese Papa. Kofi, you put on weight. I know. Kofi, Branabe Farm, Nayanko Evening Mass. Kofi, come and pick me up so that we attend Evening Mass. Oh, how I'll miss our lovely conversations. Our conversations were mostly centered on stories about your childhood in Adabraka, your Ashanti background, in Kroma's history and how smugglers were always finding new ways to evade tax. You loved your job at Customs, Excise and Preventive Service, and indeed, I'm glad you served this country with such diligence, dignity, and integrity. You were known by, you were known by all for your honesty and high moral character, and would not condone corruption or any, morin, or any moral Teptitude whatsoever. Mommy, we shared so many other great moments together. I'm glad you raised me to be a staunch Catholic. There was never a Sunday where you would where we would miss Mass. You served as a lecturer in church whilst I was a Mass server. You taught me how to pray the rosary and encouraged me to do so daily. I'll never forget the fact that you carried holy water with you everywhere you went and never missed the chance to bless me or the family whenever you saw us even though you always wanted me to be a priest. I don't know why. Deep down, I know you are, you are proud of the man I have become. Mommy, you are the biggest cheerleader and number one fan. You are always interested in my films, farms, and politics. You are always ready to support my endeavors and always find customers to patronize my business. My joy was cut short when you left us two days after I was acclaimed the parliamentary candidate for Iowa Suez Wobot. I have so many questions racing through my mind. Could it be that you were waiting for the acclamation so that you can go and rest? Left me alone, my love. Left me alone, my love. I would have preferred that you at least waited for my victory in 2024. Hmm. 
who are we to question the ways of the Almighty? As the good book says, God knows best. Thanks for taking care of me, for loving me as your only son, for all the prayers when I was born to you left us. I know you greatly adore your grandchildren, JJ and Malike. What do I tell them now? You raised me so well and I promise that I'll continue to raise your grandkids with the values you instilled on me. Mommy, despite your sad demise, I'm reminded every day that you look of you when I look at Malike, who is a spitting image of you. Indeed, this brings me some comfort that you are always here with us. Thanks for punishing me when I was wrong and praising me when I was right. Our favorite song was, I'll See You When You Get There by Coolio. I played it a few days ago and it made me miss you so much. Say hello to Aunt Kukwa, Aunt Nanaje, Grandpa, Grandma, and the lovely people up there. I know you are in good company. My love, one day I'll see you when I get there. Bye. That was a tribute by the children. May I humbly acknowledge the presence of His Excellency, the former President of the Republic, John Dramani Mahama, General Welcome. We are still in the process of filing pass and reading of tributes. If you just joined us, we welcome you into our fold. And if you wish to file pass and pay your last respects, you may do so, for our time is fast running out. Also, for those here for the very first time, we have our washrooms behind the main building on the compound. If it becomes necessary that nature calls and you need to use the washroom, you may assess the place or seek directive from our ashes and go there. Also, where we are seated, I want to bring to our attention we have kneelers beneath where we are seated. We plead, we don't step on them with our footwear. If you need a copy of the program, please scan them from the doors. We have QR codes pasted on the door for you to scan and download the program. We will continue with the reading of tribute. And we invite the person to take the tribute of the widow, widower, John Kujo Domelo. Shall we now listen to the tribute by the husband? Tribute by husband. <clears throat> I first met Antoinette Veronica Amampuma Dumelo near Dai in the mid 70s at KNUSC in Kumasi. I first saw her in the early 70s when I visited some friends in Africa Hall and she passed by us looking quiet and sad. Then the lady gossiped that she had just lost her dad. Then I met her properly when I joined Air Liquid Ghana Limited in Tema as a factory engineer and was posted to the, country's, the company's factory in Kumasi to be in charge there. I had gone to the campus to visit a few colleagues of mine who were then working there after graduation. 
I was with one such colleague when she passed by the social sciences faculty, and Antoinette, who was then doing a national service at Tech Secondary on campus, was also passing by in the company of a female Accra. We exchanged pleasantries, and whilst my colleague chatted with Antoinette because he knew her, I chatted with fellow Accra. Then I inquired for my friend who the, the lady was. He asked me if I was interested, and I said yes. He said I should join him to crash an impending party on campus because she would be there. We met, we chatted, we were impressed, and then we got married on the 4th of February 1978 at the Holy Rosary Catholic Church on KNUSB campus. It was a wedding I will never forget because almost all my Accra mates were, from Accra were there to grace the occasion. We were even hosted, we were even hosted after the wedding by the then Asante Hene Otunfo Osei Tutu II because her father, Mr. Matthew Adai, was Otunfo's private secretary a few years before. We started our marriage life in Accra after the wedding. We started working, she started working at the Central Ghana Library on the High Street. I worked as a technical manager for Air Liquid Ghana Limited at the head office on the Ringo Central near Kwame Nkrumah Circle. We lived in Accra for a while before relocating to Tema, where I worked in the factories there. We resided in Komti 6 and had three children, Caroline, Della, and Kofiseto. Antoine, as I affectionately called her, was a very affable and friendly woman, very neat and organized. She was also very hardworking and demanded high standards in everything that she wanted done and therefore was very tolerant of laziness and sloppiness. She ensured that her daughters partook in household chores, including cleaning the house helps, including accompanying the house helps to the market in their early ages and learning how to buy stuff from the market and running a home. Kofi Seto was a mass server at the St. Joseph's Catholic Church in Comte 8 Stemma. All the children washed their clothes, learned how to iron them. She would wake up in the morning and get them ready for, to leave their house because it was quite a journey from Tema to Christ the King. Elections period were interesting in our home because he was a staunch NPP member, which I can say that in the last 20, in 2020 she changed and she voted for me, so she's no more a staunch NPP member. And she always used to say that in the Kofi said, Mahama win elections now, have a position now, Ozbemo. I said, Oh, Mami, I win elections new year. I said, Okay, in the winner. So whenever I bought an NDC flag, she would buy an MPP flag. And we would both, we would both hoist our flags on one pole near the house. But ne that never brought any conflicts in the house because we both tolerated each other when it came to politics. When we were in Tema, we worshipped at, we worshipped at the St. Joseph's Catholic Church in Kumti 8 where she was a reader. And where and in Accra, we worshipped at the Holy, Holy Rosary Catholic Church in Adenta. Antoine was funny and pleasant to be with, and she was very kind. In fact, kind to a fault. She was easily moved by the needy at first instance. She therefore paid people's hospital bills, school fees, transport fares freely, and connected some jobs whenever she can. And that's Antoine for you. We moved back to Accra in 1997, and shortly after that, I retired from Air Liquid in the year 20, 2000. Whilst I engaged in my private business, she continued working with the Den Seps until she retired in 2012. We were living our private, peaceful lives until COVID came. Thereafter, she fell slightly ill in August 2001 and was, was referred to UGMC, built by John Mahama. She spent a few days at UGMC and was discharged. Thereafter, she fell ill and off, on and off in 2022, but then she lost two of her siblings, Helena and Anaje, all in May last year. I believe that also began to take a toll on her. She therefore was hospitalized a few more times at UGMC. On the 15th of August, 2023, she fell ill again in the evening, became unconscious, so we rushed her to UGMC, where they did their best to revive her with CPR, but we were unsuccessful. She passed in the evening just before 7 p.m. 
by God's grace, I have enjoyed every bit of my marriage with my wife Antoine till the very end. We were very compatible. She was my friend. The house was never boring. We will miss her, and I particularly will miss her forever. Fare thee well, Antoine. Demi Fredui. Fede well, Antoine Demri Fede from the husband. Where we've got into, we will listen to the life story of Auntie Antoine, the biography. The biography. May I? kindly invite the chosen rep to take the biography for us. Mrs. Antoinette Veronica Ama Ampoma Dumelo, Ni Adai, was born in Cape Coast on the 5th of January, 1952. Her parents, Mr. Matthew Adai and Mrs. Grace Adai, both of blessed memory, had been anxiously looking forward to a child. After almost six years of marriage, during which that period, they had sadly lost an infant boy in 1948. Antoinette's birth in January, 1952, was there for an answer to fervent prayers. A beautiful baby girl, she brought great joy and fulfillment to her parents. She was named after her paternal grand aunt, Nana Mampoma, who had a great affection for her nephew, Mr. Matthew Adai, and wielded significant influence in his life during his youthful days in Tetrim and Jamasi, Ashanti region. A more pampered daughter you could not find for miles around. She was so lovely and so much loved. It is said that at the age of two years or so, she would be taken for walks around the area in Adabraka, where the family lived on the graphic road, and passers-by would exclaim and remark, Her dad, a senior civil servant at the time, upon hearing this report, apparently bemused by that observation, commented, Indeed, she was lovely, beautiful child who was absolutely doted on by the family. At the age of five or six years, after nursery school, she was enrolled at the St. Joseph's Catholic Primary School at Abraka, where her late mom had resumed her teaching career. In September 1962, together with her late younger sister Helena, they were sent off to boarding school at Our Lady of Apostles Girls Convent School in Elmina. She was no stranger to the regimen and experience of convent life, as her own dearest aunt, Reverend Sister Benigna Consolata of blessed memory, was herself one of the first of two Catholic nuns in Africa of that order. Sister Benigna was at that time residing at Cape Coast, Ola, and would visit the Elmina convent from time to time. On one such visit, sister would call her nieces to her side to find out how they were faring, much to the admiration of the rest of the boarders. Elmina Convent was indeed a significant stepping stone in her parents' quest for a truly rounded Catholic girl-child education, both in discipline, diligence, academic excellence, and more than that, instilling good morals and a God-fearing attributes in her. In October 1965, Antoinette was admitted to the Holy Child Secondary School, Cape Coast, and began to begin her, the next phase of her education. Here, she thrived like the proverbial tree planted by the riverside, excelling both academically and exuding a great sense of responsibility acquired at an early age from the boarding school experience. In late 1978, she entered the University of Ghana to undertake her postgraduate course in library and archival studies. 
Mrs. Dumelo returned to her employers, the Ghana Library Board, where she continued working until October 1986, when she joined the Customs, Excise and Preventive Service, initially as a service librarian for 11 years. This particular work experience at the Customs availed her to many opportunities. She moved from the SEPS headquarters to the Tema Collection on transfer, precisely on the 10th of February 1997, as Chief Collector. On 1st August 2005, Mrs. Antoinette Dumelo was promoted to the rank of Assistant Commissioner of Customs and transferred to the head office. By 1st September of that same year, on the 1st of September of that same year, after 26 years of unstinted service to the SEPs, she retired honorably in January 2012, shortly after her 60th birthday. Mrs. Antoinette Dumelo met her lifelong partner, Mr. John Anat Dumelo, whilst in university. They had three children, Della, MFA, and Kofi Seto, and they forged a strong family unit, and by God's grace, all the children are happily married and settled. Mrs. Antoinette, Mrs. Dumelo, Madame Antoinette, Sister Mama, Mrs. MRS, our dearest Antoine has left us for eternity. We mourn her loss greatly, but remain grateful to God for her illustrious life of service to her family, her church, and her nation. May God grant her eternal rest in his heavenly kingdom, and may perpetual light shine upon her. Mrs. Antoine, Sister Mama, rest in perfect peace. rests in perfect peace once a clergy had done the filing pass who invites the family to cover the casket to make way for holy mass May I now invite the family to close the casket and let's get ready for Holy Mass. Whilst we are getting ready, I would like to bring to your attention some few reminders. Where we are seated, we have kneelers beneath us. Please, let's not rest our footwear on them. We also ask that we see to it that we keep our cell phones on silence. Let's keep our cell phones on silence so that during the mass.
thank you, Custom Regimental Band. Reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the righteous are in the hand of God and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish, they seem to have died, and their departure was thought to be an affliction. And they are going from us, having been disciplined a little, they will receive great good, because God tested them and found them worthy of himself. Like gold in the furnace, he tried them, and like a sacrificial burnt offering, he accepted them. In the time of their visitation, they will shine forth and will run like sparks through the stubble. They will govern nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord will reign over them forever. Those who trust in him will understand truth and the faithful will abide with him in love. As you are taking them, you are going. Yeah. Huh? Biggie. <laughs>